40 years on, we can look back on it and say that even though there's been so much progress and so much new technology, it's still probably one of the greatest achievements of the modern age. The fact that we haven't been able to go back there in recent years, despite the fact that we have better technology, I think shows just what a grand achievement it was. It ha the reason nobody has gone back to the moon or gone any further, it's largely linked to the cost of the Apollo program. It was ferociously expensive, and uh, NASA simply hasn't been funded to the same level as the Apollo program ever since. Uh, it's still performed activities in outer space, the Space Shuttle, the International Space Station, and other ventures like the robot probes to Mars. But these cost a lot less than the Apollo program did, and we'll probably never see funding levels similar to Apollo ever again. I think we're seeing a resurgence of interest because we've been away from the moon for so long, and it's also related to the fact that we have new entries in the spaceflight arena. Nations that couldn't go to the moon previously now have the technology and the industry and the economic power to run their own lunar programs. I think America will have serious trouble in meeting the goal of returning astronauts to the moon by the year 2020. It's partly a question of economics and the political climate that, that doesn't really support it as strongly as President Kennedy did for Apollo, but it's also the fact that uh, the plan that they've drafted for returning to the moon is technically flawed, and almost everyone who's looked at the program uh, finds fault in it. We don't know exactly what will happen to Project Constellation because it's still under review and that review will go on for several months. But what we uh, do suspect is that whatever happens, it won't emerge in the form that it, that it started in. We know that uh, it has to be changed for technical reasons and also we think the cost of the current program is probably more than the American economy can support at the moment, given the fact that we are in a global financial crisis. I think it's a very strange time to be celebrating the 40th anniversary, given the, the fact that the Return to the Moon program is in such dire straits. The irony hasn't escaped a lot of people, and I, I will be very interested to see how they can deal with the contradiction. China's space program is gaining ground very rapidly. Uh, next year they will launch the prototype for a very small space station, and in 2011 they will send astronauts to live on that space station. Uh, beyond that they will also send robot probes to land on the moon and even retrieve samples of moon rocks and fly them back to Earth. But the ultimate long-term goal of the Chinese space program is to land astronauts on the moon, and they believe that they will be able to do that probably after the year 2025. I think that they would use a lot of the technology that they already have. They have a, a spaceship capable of carrying three astronauts, and it's called Shenzhou, and this has already been shown to work quite well. They're also working on some new heavy lift rockets that could carry the parts for a lunar spaceship into Earth orbit, and they're also working on landing technology for their robots. And I think if you put all of those elements together, you have pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that when you, when you assemble them, it starts to resemble uh, all of the elements you need for landing astronauts there. Mm -hmm. So it will be a bit of what they currently have and a bit of what they're about to have in the, in the very near future. India is also advancing very rapidly with their space program. Uh, they're working on their own uh, manned spacecraft and they think that around about the year 2015 they'll have their, their first launch of their own astronauts aboard their own spacecraft. The Indians are also talking about going to the moon in the very long term, possibly around about the year 2030. What's at stake? Well, the moon, a return to the moon is different things to different people. There's a sense of adventure. There, there's a sense of exciting the public. There's, a sen there, there's also a lot of scientific data that needs to be obtained from the moon. But there are also, it's also a case of politics and demonstrating the power of these new emerging tiger economies, of showing that your nation is strong and proving that not only to your own people, but to other rival nations. I think that when America returns to the moon, we'll definitely be a part of it because we, have the, we still have tracking stations and we also have scientists and other people who will probably participate in the program uh, either by looking at the data or the moon rocks that, that gets returned to Earth. Uh, but we also have some involvement with the Europeans. Uh, everybody knows about the American tracking stations, but we also have a tracking station for the European Space Agency. And that's not only used to track European missions. Uh, most people don't realise that we've actually been involved in tracking the first Chinese mission to the moon, which was just a robot orbiter uh, from a station in Western Australia. And that was done with the Europeans. As a, as a tracking 
base, yes, we, we probably would have some role in that. Okay. Exactly how, how, fur, how much further we would be involved with the Chinese beyond uh, the use of a tracking station owned by the Europeans, that's a different question, and I don't think our role would be uh, as extensive as it's been with the Americans. There's been some talk about sending space tourists all the way to the moon and possibly selling uh, tickets for $100 million uh, for a seat. Uh, but we don't know when or if that will actually take place. What I think is more realistic is the idea of private companies sending small robot missions to the moon to land there and put robot rovers onto the surface of the moon. Uh, and that, that could be done for commercial reasons, to land instruments there, land cargo there, return scientific data, or even bury human remains on the moon, as one company is genuinely proposing. I think that the next footprints that we see on the moon will definitely be made by Chinese astronauts. And I think that they will probably land there at some point between the year 2025 and the year 2030. I think China is very serious about going there. At the moment, we don't know what NASA's response to this ch the international challenge will really be. Uh, their whole space program is in a state of flux, it's in a state of review, and some people would even suggest that it's in a state of chaos. Uh, given the fact that there are technical problems and uh, a lot of political hurdles to be overcome in the, in the future. Uh, what, I, what I do suspect is that they, if they want to challenge the Chinese and respond to, to this, this new quest to go to the moon, they will have to do a lot of work very soon to get their program back on track.